Yo, oh, uh, all right. What's going on, everybody? What's up? What's up? Berg is back in the building with the 007 hat. <laughs> he's doing it. He's undercover. Uh, looking like he's bench pressing something for the Olympic team with that. <laughs> No hate. Going to Moscow, no, representing. No hate. He's representing for the U.S. In Moscow. <laughs> That's right. He's breaking records out here. We ended last episode in a heated debate about music. Uh, Jay-Z versus Kanye, this, that, and the other. Since then, in the meantime, between time, I think we've agreed to respectively disagree. I love Kanye. He loves Jay-Z, and that's okay. There's a There's a tomorrow. We still woke up the next day. That's it. You went to sleep listening to Jay-Z. I woke up listening to Kanye and the world still spins. The same way. So, I thought we would break away from the sports and stuff. I know everyone's talking about the Super Bowl and Tom Brady. But we ended last episode with the music topic. So, um, my sister got me a vinyl record player for Christmas. And it's pretty cool. So I've been building a collection the past couple months. I wrote down a few things on why I picked the things that I picked uh, to start my collection. And we can go from there. I'll go ahead and start it off with this. Uh, my mom and my sister got me this album. This uh, Jimi Hendrix, the greatest hits album. Um, it has a lot of the greatest hits that I like. My favorite song from Jimi Hendrix is Voodoo Child. Uh, that's not on this album, but this album features Hey Joe, All Along the Watchtower, Boxy Lady, Bold as Love, Red House, and Voodoo Child, which is very close to my favorite song, the two different songs. Voodoo Child is a very popular song, but Voodoo Child, with an E, is a 14-15 minute song different style it's more of a blues sound and uh i think that's my favorite hendrix song voodoo child um, but that's uh one of my favorite rock stars of all time jimmy hendrix any thoughts on jimmy i'm not a big jimmy hendrix fan like i i know his music but it's not something that i'm gonna just listen to and my style is weird um uh, I'm a pastor's son. I, I'll just give you the breakdown. I grew up listening to gospel music. Um, I didn't listen to much outside music until like third, fourth grade. I started listening to Lil John and Eminem. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and uh, it grew from there, like Ludacris and uh, Mike Jones and Swisha House blew up. <laughs> and then it took over from there. Uh, but I, uh, as soon as I got my license, it's when Lil Wayne and Kanye were battling it out for the top spot. And uh, I love Lil Wayne. I would probably put him as the most influential rapper of, or even musician of my, uh, my generation. I would put him a little bit above Kanye, um, but barely. I mean, to this day, I think current day Kanye outpowers Wayne. Um, but but back when I was growing up, it was pretty tough to beat Lil Wayne. Uh, I don't have any Lil Wayne vinyls. I looked, but most everything that I wanted was gone. There's a guy that drives a, a Dodge Charger. He just steps on the gas every time. It never gets old to him. He never gives me a break. I bet you he comes back by before we're done with the podcast. Um, next up. This album is also my mom and sister got me. This is Led Zeppelin. Berg, I don't imagine you like Led Zeppelin. Yeah, I showed Again, you Cashmere. Again, I heard their music. I mean, like, I was listening when first time I heard Led Zeppelin. I don't even believe you were born. Well, you may right. have been. And I'm not even saying I've been a Led you Zeppelin know, fan forever. I've, but I'm. It's not. It's definitely not nothing. I'm gonna play. I'm and, stuck and on it. it. Vehicle, Berg, like I, I gotta be honest with you. Like I said, I grew up listening to Mike Jones and Pretty Ricky, and that's know. why you 
opinion is a little warped. <laughs> <laughs> but dude when i took a dive into led zeppelin uh i couldn't stop it was the live performances it was the history of each band member um the drummer john bonham who's passed away now he passed away about 30 some years ago uh it's a pretty cool story to look into but this specific album is their first studio album as a band the A side features uh, four really good songs: "Good Times, Bad Times," my favorite, "Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You." Next is "You Shook Me" and "Dazed and Confused," which is a very popular Led Zeppelin song. Next up is the Man of the Hour, Kanye. This was a uh, critically doubted and kind of clowned album. Which one is that one? This is the Yay album, but um, the front cover of it, you can see, it says, I hate being bipolar, it's awesome. This is when he was having issues with whatever medication issues he was having, and he was isolating himself in Wyoming. This album was recorded over a two-week span, and uh, it features Ghost Town and Violent Crimes, too the most popular songs off the album and uh, not the greatest Kanye album by any stretch but it's worth having just for those two songs and the yeah it doesn't sound good the I mean that's not something if, it was a kind of like a a poor man's concept album it wasn't like a Pink Floyd concept album or anything like that but uh it yeah, it was like the evolution of Kanye yeah, it's worth having if you're a Kanye fan Next, I have Piano and a Microphone Live by Prince in 1983. I got this because it has a uh, short rendition of Purple Rain, Prince singing it live on piano. Um, I got my sister a vinyl record of Purple Rain, and I didn't know until she played it when she got home that it was a slowed reverb recording of Purple Rain, which is pretty sweet. I listen to slowed reverb music anyway. On YouTube, I look it up on my own all the time. I didn't know, and she didn't either, until we played it. But it is pretty sweet. Um, if I can, I'll get a, like an audio recording of that and uh, try to play like ten seconds of it or whatever on the on the podcast. This is another Led Zeppelin album, House of the Holy. This is their fifth studio album, and uh, you might can't show that. Man. No, you could show that. The album was... The What's the name of the album again? House of the Holy. Oh my goodness. The song No Quarter is probably my second favorite song by them. Jimmy Page's best guitar solo, in my opinion. Also features the song Remains the Same. This album came out after Jimmy Page, the lead guitarist, had the speculation of dealing with like dark arts and gnarly stuff like buying houses of old people that did like devil craft and stuff like that and then the okay, yeah, no, I'm definitely but not I know listening to nothing but like that. the lead singer's son ended up passing away when he was I think like seven or nine years old something like that yeah. and the inside of this album has a scary picture of, it looks like a person offering up a kid. This is the album art. It is very dark and very deep and the songs are just the same as the album cover and the, uh, the interior. It's dark and deep. And, uh, yeah, it'll take you on a journey. If you ever have kids, man, don't ever let them listen to that. House of the Holy is a great album. No Quarter is, uh, it'll take, <laughs> it'll take you away. Yeah, don't, you don't want Yeah, they, they were dealing with something away. else. Um, next up, this is not music. This is Joey Diaz, the original inspiration for me to even start doing this. Um, he is probably the most foul mouth comic 
I've ever heard. So if you're uh, faint of listening, don't look him up. But if you need a laugh, yeah, there's a million hours of his stuff on YouTube. Um, this specific album was recorded in 2017 in Chicago called Socially Unacceptable by Joey Diaz. And my favorite bit that you could look up is Mr. Martini. Talks about uh, his neighbor when he was a kid, torturing his neighbor with uh, snowballs and rocks and sticks and, you know, dumb kid stuff. And this is my prized possession so far of my album. I saved it for last because the weekend is actually doing the Super Bowl performance this coming up weekend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Pun in, unintended. Um, the weekend, performing this weekend at the Super Bowl. But this is, in my opinion, his best work. This is the first third of his first album. His first album, Trilogy, debuted in 2012. Some singles came out in 11. Um... These are the first few songs off of that 20 plus song album. Um, this specific four disc set features The Party and the After Party, What You Need and The Knowing, which are three of my favorite songs by him, especially from that time period. Um, my favorite song off that album being The Birds Part 2. Um, slowed Reverb, if you want to look that up. And. I discovered a lot of my music through podcasts and stuff, like some of the stuff I didn't stumble upon my own. I Like a lot of this Led Zeppelin stuff, like I wouldn't have listened to that House of the Holy if it wasn't for podcasts. I'd heard it on Periscope, some dude's podcast, and I liked it, so I listened to the whole album, and it was worth listening to. Um, <laughs> so that was my beginning of a vinyl collection and I wrote down 10 songs that I couldn't go without going forward this is like 30 minutes before we started filming I sat down and thought about it for a quick second 10 songs with the 10 artists to go with it that I couldn't live without um, first and if you haven't heard any of these give them a listen if they if you think they suck, let me know. I don't care. I still love them. First, uh, in no particular order. First is Cashmere, live from uh, Cel or, yeah, Celebration Day, Led Zeppelin. Second is Voodoo Child, which I said earlier off Electric Lady Land, Jimi Hendrix. Me and My Drink by Lil Wayne. Um, I thought for the longest time, it was pretty embarrassing. I thought it was too short. That was rapping on that, but it wasn't. It was Short Dog. I, I was giving Too Short a lot of credit for that verse. Too Short. Which he, I mean... That was a he, nice verse. He just... No, I'm talking about too, the original Too Short. It's, short it's dog, nicer baby. than Short Dog. But that verse I loved, and I thought it was too short the whole time, and I know that's my fault. That's just no... No excuses there. That was my fault. Okay. Still, I love the song, Me and My Drink by Lil Wayne. That's the first song that I learned how to play on piano. It made me learn to play piano. Um, next is Coldest Winter by Kanye. It's not even a top three on the album that it's on, but it's my personal favorite Kanye song. Um, next, a song I just also referenced, The Birds Part 2 particularly slowed reverb on YouTube by the weekend. Um, and next, I got Frank Ocean, Pyramids, slowed reverb. You, I don't think you heard that one either. And you're not a fan of the slowed reverb stuff, are you, Bird? Not at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know what it is about me. I showed the Birds part two slowed to my brother Corey, and he played it before every game when he was at Mercer. He liked it. To each his own. Um, I'll give you a few minutes to give out like, your top ten songs these people need to look up or whatever. Um, okay. Next, No Quarter Live by Led Zeppelin at uh, Celebration Day. And that's, again, Jimmy Page. Unspeakable. Uh, Shine On You Crazy Diamond, Pink Floyd. 
live or no, either one is good enough. David Gilmour is the lead guitarist there. And second favorite song by Pink Floyd is Dogs off the Animals album. Um, pretty rare. You don't hear a whole lot of people playing Dogs, but once... <laughs> no. Actually, I was playing it the other day, and, and you said something about it. It had dogs barking yeah, in it. Yeah, you said, yeah. Yeah. It's a, like a 17-minute long song, something like that. But, uh, yeah, I almost went to sleep until I heard it, the dogs barking. It takes me away. <laughs> and last, I had to put Drake on there, so my favorite song by Drake is The Ride off the Take Care album. And uh, I had two Led Zeppelin songs, two Pink Floyd songs on there, so... Uh, as far as the artist group, having 10, the honorable mentions were Snoop Dogg and Rick James. Uh, Sensual Seduction by Snoop Dogg is that jam, and Fire and Desire by Rick James is, is never going to die. <laughs> so that's my little take on music. I'm sure I forgot a few of my favorite songs, and they'll hit me later after we're done recording. But... What do you think? What do you want to add on there, Bird? Give me something from Jay Z. What are you like your? I mean, it's just mostly most of Jay Z's music. I can't necessarily say I have a favorite song. Like, if you want to go inspirational, it's not even a Jay Z song. That one, uh, one of the most inspiring songs on my playlist is um, an old song by Groove Theory called "Keep Trying." That's one of the most inspirational songs that I have. But when it comes to just music and lyrics, you know, I grew up when the art of hip hop, it was actually emceeing. It wasn't just a slow reverb beat or a bounce around beat where everybody bounced around. People actually listened to the lyrics that, you know, the artist was giving you. And that's what made the song, not the beat. Now it was always an added bonus if you got a top notch beat. Don't you know? Don't get it confused. But the lyrics were the main focal point of the actual track. You know when hip hop was originated. I feel bad. I re-listened to the last episode and I kind of went off on Wu Tang. I like Wu Tang and always have, but just the sound quality of that era was just so far behind. It's like a movie. Of course it's just, it was. It's like watching Indiana Jones. It the gets... sound quality was, but you listening to the sound quality versus listening to the words coming out of those individuals' mouths. Peace to the gods. But um, even uh, their later work, like Black Diamonds is my favorite Wu-Tang song. I mean, I'm not looking at the... The te you know, technology was different. You grew up when technology was crystal clear. It was different back then. So we didn't necessarily look at how it sounded necessarily. We looked at the lyrics that were coming out of the individual's mouth. And they didn't have a wide array of beats to choose from. It was more all, Are you kidding me? all boom bap. Yeah, it was a lot of, of, of boom bap. But everything, like, is... It's more or less the same now. It's just a slow reverb. But there's so many different ways you could take it now. But there is, but we're still talking about the beat. You mm -hmm. know, when I grew up in a time, and again, where it was about the lyrics, not the beat. We're still talking about the beat and the clarity of the beat. I'm talking about the lyrics the artist put on the track. That's what was meant most. But that's more so of like poetry and not music. If you're more interested mm -hmm. in the, the, the... We're talking about hip-hop. I know, but you're hip -hop, more... Hip-hop, that's what it is. But you're more interested in the words than the that's sound. Hip, that's hip-hop. But music is sound. We're talking about hip-hop. Not... Hip-hop is its own culture. It's its own culture. And that culture, that's what it is. But hip-hop uh, has to be like multiple things. Like hip-hop is dance. Hip-hop is dress. Hip-hop is it, exactly. attitude. Hip-hop is... Exactly. And when it came down to it, if it was just a on somebody beating on the table, it didn't matter because what was coming out of that individual's mouth is what everybody was listening to. It could have been a boom, boom, bap 
with somebody just making a beat out of their mouth. Yeah. But they were listening, they were wanting to hear the lyrics that the artist was spitting. I'm a music fan. The yeah, that's 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 why I good. say our opinion differ. You listening to just the music, you know, the beat half of it. That's why you like the slow reverb, I feel like, because you can't hardly they're not really saying anything. I got murdered. it just sounds like no, because a drunk I, person. I know the words already and it drags it out and it puts a different feel onto the song. <clears throat> no, I understand what you're saying, but I just don't get it. Especially if you have a good sound system. You turn it up, it, it distorts the bass and makes it sound different. That's and that's no vibe. disrespect to people, you know, down that's, in H-Town. That's, that's, yeah, that's that, their thing. That's what I was going to say. You that's know what I'm saying? The Houston vibe. But yeah. just like you feel like that's the Houston vibe, and that's how it goes over on the East Coast of things. When hip-hop was originated, it was a, it was about lyrical content, bro. Lyrical content. Not how many keys you can play on the keyboard in one track. Or how how big, how much you can slow the track down and still make it sound good. It was about actual lyrics. Give me the top three from your era up north. Biggie, Jay-Z, and Nas. In that order? No, it's no, it's no order. I love them all the same equally. I mean, I'm, if there was an order, Big would be at the bottom because his resume isn't as long as um, Jay's and Nas. Jay would be at the top because his resume just outdoes anyone. How old was Big when he died? 20... Five, twenty-six, maybe. That's hard to say then. That's just like saying someone's better than Jimi Hendrix. You can't say that because he's not there to back that up. If he lived to be fifty and still had that same resume, you could say that. Who? Oh. Jimmy or Tupac or Big, someone that died early that had. A they died early. They weren't able to give me the music. I can't say. I can't say what I never was able to hear. But it wasn't I can his go. shortcoming of talent. It's not the talent, no. But I'm saying I like him more because I got more music from Jay. I got a lot of albums of Jay that I can listen to mm -hmm. on a daily basis. I only got two albums of Biggs. Granted, both of them are great. You know, you can probably say three because The Life After Death it was a double CD. Had a bunch of songs. Every song was crazy on it. But Jay-Z has too many. His resume stretches out so far. Not just with his albums, but everybody else that he collabed with on their songs and their albums. It's just too long. You can't you can't you can't do nothing with it. Even Nas can't do nothing with it. And Nas body Jay on Ether when they was beefing. I don't know. You probably was like hmm. five when that came out. So Jay-Z and Nas had a beef and Nas dropped a track called Ether. Body Jay-Z. And Jay-Z came back strong. But it's the fact that Nas Ether was so impeccable that it wouldn't have mattered who he was bothering. He would have he would have chewed him up and spit him out with the ether. So if you had to tell people Let's say these people don't listen to the music that we do, and you wanted to say, listen to these two songs. Would Ether be one of those? It depends on the crowd. But Ether would be up. Ether would be. I don't. I don't really know. No, I don't think Ether would be in there because I don't have a two favorite songs. It's hard to say two songs. Now you give me two albums. Different story. What albums are you picking? That's still tough, though. Um, I'm either going to go Blueprint or the Black Album for Jay. That's going to be the number one, either the Blueprint or the Black Album. 
Then we're going to go. I don't know. I don't know. It's so many different albums. Because you know, a lot of people don't. I'm a big D-Block fan. Big up, D-Block. Uh, Styles P, Sheik Loops, Jadakiss. What up, what up? Um, um, I, I love them. Like They're actually my favorites over Jay-Z. I listen to them more than I listen to Jay. But they're still going right now. And a lot of people wouldn't know because they don't listen to real, you know, hip-hop music. It's a difference. They're still dropping. You still got a three-man rap group that started in the mid-90s, 95, 96. And all three of them are successful individuals and still rapping together to this day. I like yeah. Jada. And Jada's lyrical, but Styles P is just as. So is Sheik Looch. They're just different deliveries. You know? So I can go there, or I can go... <sighs> so many different ways, man. I could go to DMX... Both of his albums that he dropped in 1998. I don't know if he's still the only um, artist in any genre of music that's dropped two multi-platinum albums in one year still to this date. But I know for a long time he was. In 1998, he dropped It's Dark As Hell Is Hot and Flesh Of My Flesh And Blood Of My Blood in one year and they were multi-platinum. And I'm not sure if any other artist in any genre of music has done that to this day. Those albums were impeccable. Both of them were from top to bottom. If I had to pick, I couldn't even pick two. I'd have to pick three just because these three are so good. Um, Kanye's Fantasy album, which we were listening to in my car the other day. I was skipping through all those tracks the other day, what, a couple of days ago. Um, the Weekends Trilogy album, which was a third of was shown to you right there, that House of Balloons that I showed you last, and then Drake's Take Care album. Drake's Take Care album is a pretty complete piece of work. That's how, that's how you know it's a difference in era, because you didn't even mention... Some of the greatest, like that's it's it's just a difference in era when it comes to what you're listening to, and that's gonna, you know, make your opinion different. Granted, I got you know I've seen a, all of it, so I'm not disrespecting any of those. Drake, The Weekend, well, I'm de The Weekend would not be in in, in any, but like he's not even that's that's a. I'm talking about hip hop, and he's not even in that category. Neither is. I'm Drake. talking about music. Okay, well, that's hard to say because I, I can go to so many other R and B albums, that are. Those are two R and B albums. You know. But this that's a third of it, and that has, one, two, three, four. That has seven. Great songs on because it. Because the homie Mary J. Blige has... <sighs> Mary J. Blige has at least four classic albums that I would put over the week, uh, the weekend's albums. Not, Any day. Maybe if... Not that one for me. That one... Look. Any day. But that one right there, it has... Any 20. day. 20. I know four it, albums. It's so large. Mary J. Well, well, her four albums against the 20, or however you want to put it, she no, but this one album there's like 20 plus songs that are great. It's just such a large piece of work. But then you got to remember back in the day when Mary J. Blige was dropping albums, everybody had 14, 15 songs on the, on the CD. That was standard. 14, 15, 16 songs. But not that quality. Mm, I don't know. <laughs> I, it's like that one, that album is like a cult classic. If you dig it, you dig it. If you don't, you don't. 
It's like Pulp Fiction or something. Some people hated it. Some people think it's the best movie ever. I don't know. I never seen. I never heard anybody say they didn't like Pulp Fiction. I have for the people that watched it. Yeah. I never. Nobody's ever told. I watched me it anything. for the first time with other people, and like we all talked about it, and some people didn't even care. I mean, you know, and I thought it was great. But it's again, it's a younger generation. They probably. I mean, they grew up watching different kind of movies. Different though, when it's a younger generation, you get a, it's, it's a difference in how you see things. When you see Pulp Fiction and you were actually alive in the eighties, when those type of things were going on, you're gonna look at that movie differently versus mm. being born in the nineties and I mean, every. I guarantee, in in twenty years, they're gonna be kids that are gonna think what you're saying is oblivious. People are gonna watch Avatar and not be impressed. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. That's what I'm saying. Um, yeah, time catches up with everything. That's my point right there. But that's the time that I'm going to stick with. I'm going to stick with Drake and The Weeknd and Lil Wayne and Kanye. Don't get it wrong. Like I told you, I like some of Drake's music. But again, they are starting to become redundant. They are all starting yeah. to sound the same. Every song. And I mean, Lil Wayne went commercial. Kanye I mean, went crazy. Not necessarily commercial, just the songs are sounding the same. Like Freeway, I don't know. You probably don't know who Freeway is. The Freeway, guy Rick was a Ross. part of state. No, it was no. a part of state property. Benny Siegel, um, the boys out of Philly, and Freeway was one of my favorites. But again, he was one of those artists where every song started sounding the same. He couldn't get away from mm -hmm. it. Very lyrical artist. You know, creative diversity. But every song was sounding the same. That's about like Kevin Hart stand up comedy joints. Yeah. You know, you know, already know he's going to yell and they're going to sound the same. Yeah. To me, my opinion. Speaking of stand up, we can do that. Give me like uh, a couple of your favorite stand up people. You know how I am. What are you going to give me, Bernie Mac? You know how I am. Bernie Mac is definitely number one for me. Really? Number one? Number one. Bernie Mac is the... Definitely. Because you know how no I am way. about stand-up. Stand-up comedy is hard to make me laugh because you're up there doing a job. So you're, you've are you made this stuff. Bernie, guys like Bernie Mac aren't trying to be funny. They're just talking. And it's hilarious. Guys like Mike Epps. Like, he's going up in there. Um, I haven't seen a whole bunch of Richard Pryor stand-ups. I'd like to watch some with you. But I, I want to watch some, but I want to see the movie first. And they better get Harlan Mike Knight. Epps. They, no, oh, no. They're they making a Richard Pryor movie. They better yeah. get Mike Epps to play Richard Pryor. If they get anybody else to play Richard Pryor... On that um, movie, it's going to be a bust. You can't do that without getting my gaps. Um, but then I don't have a lot of I, I don't have a lot of stand up comedy experience as well. You know what I'm saying? Because it's not it's not that you know funny to me. I'm giving it to Richard, the top spot, just out of uh, respect for the the old school for the culture. Uh, a tight second is Mur Eddie Murphy for me. He hadn't touched a microphone in 30 years, but what he did in the 80s is uh, good enough. And just because of the numbers, um, Kevin Hart and Dave Chappelle are pretty close, but the, the art of it, Chappelle beats him out. Ticket sales, Kevin Hart... I mean, he, he's doing sit-ups and stuff on Instagram with The Rock, and he's going to sell a lot of tickets, but Chappelle, his heart is in it more. I think that's all he does. That's probably going to be another opinionated thing there. But Chappelle, he's not in all of the movies and filming all the commercials. Kevin Hart's everywhere. His mind is everywhere. 
But he had the opportunity because he has done movies. He has done movies in and the commercials. 90s, in the 90s, he so did he, Half Baked. but He has had movie opportunities. But in, no, no, not in 30 years. I mean... Not, you know Dave Chappelle. All them roles Dave Chappelle done turned down. He He's did, had opportunities to he do He did the, the Netflix stand-up comedies. That's it. And he got paid enough of that to live a So you think nice no life. one has offered Dave Chappelle no money to do a movie since the 90s? Since, I mean, they probably have offered him, but he hadn't done it. Okay. He should. I'd like to see him in an Eddie Murphy movie. Something like that. He did, we talked about this the other day, him and uh, Nutty Professor. He did a great job in Nutty Professor. Mm-hmm. That's right. But, uh, yeah, I've been watching stand-up since I was a kid. The first stand-up I ever saw was Cat Williams. Pimp Chronicles Part 1. The one with the uh, green suit and the big belt buckle. <laughs> and uh, The big belt buckle. I, I love... <laughs> dude. I loved stand-up well, ever well. since then. For real, that's what, what he had, he had on? on. He had on... You could tell the time because his, his pants are all baggy and you can't even see his shoes. Looks like he's wearing bell-bottom jeans. And what did he have on? He had a big belt buckle. <laughs> <laughs> Miles, why he had that big belt? I don't know why he had it on. He had a he had a <laughs> cup bigger than your hat. <laughs> he walked out there with a with a big pimp cup. He was the man. Cat Williams really was doing his thing back when I was growing up. But he made me love stand up comedy. So ever since Cat Williams came on the scene, I followed stand up. I, been watching everybody. Everybody since Cat Williams. Yeah. The funny man. I, since the movie with with um, Friday After Next Christmas. That was a good. Yeah, he had a good role in that. He has a lot of good roles in movies. Cat. Um, that's got to be his best one though. He played the choir director in that Ice Cube and Mike Epps movie. Yeah, but it was like next pimp Sunday playing, or whatever pimp, it is. Him playing the pimp at the store. On, yeah. on, on Friday afternoon, it's yeah. got to be his best role. In the bathroom with what's his name? Yeah. That's crazy. But yeah, Cat Williams got me on the comedy, and then Dave Chappelle was already on the scene by then, the Killing Him Softly. Mm-hmm. And uh, he had a couple of good ones. Martin Lawrence is something that we can't. Can't leave, leave one. I, I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm gonna Run, put, tell that. I'm going to put Martin over a lot of the people you just named. Yeah, Run Tell That is pretty classic. Um, I got into Louis C.K. for a few years. He got in trouble a couple of years back, but uh, Louis was a really big name when I was in college. Crazy white dude. Um, I showed you Bill Burr. Burr. Yeah, he's at the top of the game now. Burr. Um, like the. Uh, um the word that Gucci man says all the time. Scoochie. Yeah, I left I left Gucci off my top ten list. I got Gucci in my top ten. I thought you Most said you had Most garbage rappers I've oh, okay. ever heard in my freaking I was about life. To say, don't backtrack on me now. <laughs> no, I won't say he's garbage. I like Gucci. Top uh, ten cat in the hat rappers in the world. No, nah, I like no Gucci. Don't disrespect the Gucci as a man. Because he's doing his thing, and I commend him. But I don't want to listen to Green Eggs and Ham when I'm listening to hip-hop music. I like Scoochie. <laughs> I don't want to, well, I don't even eat pork no more, so I don't want no Green Eggs and Ham. I like the uh, In My Kitchen. See, I like the, he in my kitchen. The Truth. It won't the truth, he's telling. Classical intro, <laughs> Trap House 3. That's some good classic bangers from Gucci. And then his team he had with OJ the Juice Man and Waka Flocka. Flocka. They go down as top five dead or alive. The most, the worst rap group in history. Mm-mm. <laughs> When it comes to hip hop and lyrics, I, top five dead or alive, the worst. I walked in rap group. 
I walked into a music store and purchased Flocka Veli. Waka Flocka's CD. So what's wrong with you now? <laughs> walked in the store and paid $12 for Flocka's CD. Ain't no way. Back when we we had to buy all our CDs when we grew up anyway. I didn't have to buy it. I did it out of respect. Right. You, he should thank you. Yep, I went to the store. I, I burned gas to go buy Waka's CD. I played it for a couple of years, too. Took it to parties. You ever seen um, on social media where the people, the guy, the big brown dude, is going around slapping people's cigarettes out there? <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> That's right. what you do. You you slap the. the that's what flock somebody. Of that's what somebody need to do to me if I'm listening to a Waka Flocka song. <laughs> slap my phone out of, or whatever device I you got. You see me in line at Hastings about to buy Flocka and you come and smack me. I will come and smack you and your hat off you. I told you. With <laughs> <laughs> that double <laughs> seven hat you got on. <laughs> Hit me with an Olympic weight. All right. I figured we'd leave the football and the sports off of this one. We'd upload another one before a week. Before the Super Bowl. Next week, though, we got predictions. We're coming back with some more. We got some different predictions. Oh, hey. Super Bowl. Super Bowl. Got to tell the people I was wrong about McGregor. He he got me. Oh, You said McGregor's getting knocked out, and it sure enough happened. You were right. I'll give it to you. I I just, I don't know. I just, that's the way I saw that one. I'll buy you a coffee at Sheets or something. You got me on that one. We need to start doing $1 bets or something on here, like slapping a dollar down on the table and leave it on the table until next. Punch it right up here, up against the wall. I need to fix all the little breaks in the wall. Speaking of, yeah, the first few episodes, I never even addressed this. We were sitting in lawn chairs, all right? I know we were sitting in lawn chairs. You don't got to tell me. So we're we're progressing, baby. We got the nice little white chairs, mm-hmm. you know. You got the different light in here so you could see. Can't see my chair really because I take up so much space. Yeah, if you're an Olympic lifter. <laughs> no, no, no. But, um, but yeah, yeah man. We, we, we stepping it up. Big predictions. Super Bowl, I'm excited because I want Patrick Mahomes to beat Tom Brady by 50. Yeah, he got Puff Daddy Mahomes throwing a bunch of touchdowns next week. 50. I got Tommy cementing that legacy, baby. But we'll get into that. My whole Brooklyn Nets prediction. Uh huh. Yep. I got some FanDuel bets riding it out tonight. I'm going to break it down how I'd maintain my little moolah on FanDuel, too. I, you know, I've been keeping it up. For a couple of weeks now, I feel pretty good about it. So what we're gonna do in the West? I'll with break the NBA, that down. All of our last predictions. If you take a look back at some of our last episodes, yep. The predictions on the West are starting yep. to shift around. Yep. Pay attention. It's making sense what we said. Just pay we're, attention. We're speaking truth on the tremendous opinion pod. Berg, you got anything for these people? No, we can call it a night, man. Yeah, I think this is not going to be Tom Brady's last year. He is going to win another ring, and he'll be back to show it off next season. A onion ring, a Ooh. blooming onion ring from Outback. He won't win. If he I don't, hate blooming onion. If he don't win this one, he won't win no more. He has to win this one. This, this one's is, in his home. This is his field. This ain't his home. He a patriot. He been he moved to he got an apartment. He ain't got no house in Tampa. Yeah, you're right. You're right. <laughs> that ain't his home. But at the same time, I don't care who home it is. The Chiefs are the truth. Mm. I'm still siding with Tommy. And I'll say it now and I'll say it next week. I'm with Tommy. And I think Prince had the greatest Super Bowl performance halftime show of all time. But I think they snub us on some of these halftime shows, man. Like they make them whack. Like that's they, why last I'm nervous. Last season they had Jennifer Lopez and Shakira. Shakira, like, Shakira. I, first of all, I'm trying to figure out at what point in life did everybody decide that Jennifer Lopez could sing? Mm-hmm. Great actress. She did well with the Selena movie and a whole bunch of other movies that she's been in. 
Hey, what? she did the uh, the New Year's thing in New York, and she did all right. She did uh, Steven Tyler's song. I don't care. Dream on. She did that. And hit, Anybody she hit the high cheap. note. Man. I she hit, hit the high note. I could do that. And she no. didn't do that on screen. Listen. It she, wasn't bad. I was kind of disappointed in her. You didn't watch the And that's A-Rod's woman. I like A-Rod. I'm a big A Rod. I'm a Jennifer Lopez fan, but I don't mean I have to like her singing. I don't think she can sing. I'm the same way with Shakira. I think she sounds like that. Like she's a voice off of Sesame Street or you something. You know, so that was not a good Super Bowl. Um, I think the weekend is going to pan out to be a good one. Going to do a good job. I hope he does uh, at least one song that's not his. I want a hip hop Super Bowl halftime performance. I want Drake to come out there with him. Like if you do the Super Bowl, like the fact that it's in Tampa Bay and close to Miami, you supposed to have the whole Miami Trick Daddy, Rick Ross, this whole Maybach music camp. Um, what's the it weekend called? has a song with Rick Ross. Hope he comes out. Um, Trina, all that whole Miami camp. You know they should do that. Instead of, you know, but who am I? T-Pain. He's from Tallahassee. T-Pain. Any, all of the Florida people. Yeah. Ace Hood. Lil Pump. No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Have him out there. He got traded. Uh. <laughs> he got traded. No Lil Pump. I don't even know any of his music anyway. Kodak. He's from Florida. He's Who's out Kodak? now. Kodak Black. Oh, yeah, he got one song I like with um, with, uh, Frenchie Montana, Bite There. He got the one with Plies, too. I like that one. But, yeah, Um, I'm looking for the Super Bowl halftime show. Usually it's a joke, and I don't like it. I think it's corny, but I hope it's not too commercialized for him. I like The weekend. I want him to do good. So, I'll be looking for that. They need to get him a lady up there like Janet Jackson and, and, you know... You don't remember that, do you? Oh, yeah. I was, I was watching that live. Yeah. yeah. Pulled her boobs out. Yeah. You was like I, yeah. six or seven, so you was yeah. probably like, oh. wow. Well, no, wow, we wow. Janet Jackson. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I remember where I was watching that one. Me too. Justin Timberlake. Nice. Well, good place. But, nice. Um, I remember, wasn't it Britney Spears that was next and everyone was worried? Like, she did it the year after, I think. And everyone was worried. Mm-hmm. Like, if Janet Jackson showed her tits, what's uh, Crazy what? Business. Yeah, what's Britney going to do? God bless. I mean, but that's, the world is totally different now, man. I mean. Yeah, no one cares. If Britney was grinding like that Skylar chick when I was in third grade. <laughs> <laughs> no one would even care. There's crazier things going on in the Super Bowl halftime show out here. Look at the streets of L.A. It's crazy out here, but we're still going. Berg, any last words for these folks? Peace to the gods, man. I'm still going to listen to my music even though Berg makes fun of it. I don't care. All right? Much love, everybody. We'll uh, upload another episode in a couple of days about the Super Bowl. Until then, peace out. Peace out.